Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video tutorial by the Coda. Okay, so this is episode number three of my Universal Windows Platform programming tutorial series. And as a special thank you for hitting 1000 subscribers, thank you. I'm going to show you how to create a fully working media player on Windows 10. Now, this media player will be compatible with most Windows devices, including Windows phones, Windows tablets, the Xbox One, and Windows desktops and laptops, um, as well as as well as things like the Internet of Things, etc., etc. So, anything that's supported on the store, this app should be compatible with. Now, I've created a, a media player for the Microsoft Store, and I've made around about five hundred US dollars off that app on the store. So, not a bad little investment for a couple of hours of writing code. Um, I've also provided a tutorial on my website on how to do this at www.thecoder.com. You'll see it on the home page uh, just here. Okay, so we're going to be following that tutorial today. Um, this is a video version of the tutorial. I will provide the video on the website as well, so if you do come to the website, you should see it. And all right let's get started so we're going to start off by loading up visual studio 2017 i've got mine in the start menu here okay so we're going to go ahead and create a new project and we're going to use windows universal visual c sharp template we're going to select dotnet framework 4.5 there's no particular reason for this you can select 4.6 or 4.7 if you have it installed but I tend to find that the majority of people do have 4.5 pre-installed on their device so they shouldn't have a problem using the app and it shouldn't require any additional downloads when they do use it so we're going to select the blank universal windows app and we're just going to name this project YouTube media player Whoops. and I'm going to save this in my documents because for some reason Visual Studio has changed the location directory click on OK so the target and minimum versions we're just going to leave as default so the target version is always going to be the highest version which is a creator's update that's the edition that we have installed and the minimum version we're actually going to select the lowest build available which is 10.2.48 for maximum compatibility people with not so much internet data um, they might opt not to update to the November update uh, the anniversary update or the creators update so we're going to select the lowest version just to ensure that it's compatible with most devices click on OK so once the project files have been created, you can go ahead and close the default splash screen that loads up. And we're going to start off by opening the main page.xaml. Okay, so once, once the main page.xaml loads, you'll be presented with the blank canvas. First of all, what I like to do is just close the split view pane. Um, it just makes it easier for me to navigate through the software. It is complex software, so I like to keep it as simple as possible. So we go ahead and close that with this little icon down here. And then we can just switch from design to code view with these tabs here. So in the design view, up in the top left, you'll see a drop down box that says 5 inch phone. 1920 by 1080 300% scale we're going to change that to a 13.3 inch desktop 1280 by 720 100% scale this doesn't mean that it's only going to be compatible with a 13.3 inch desktop it just means that we're viewing it at that size and resolution next we're going to make it a little bit easier to see everything because that's a little bit small so we're going to select fit all and you'll see it will maximize the blank canvas for us now we can start by adding a, a few controls to the form. So we're going to start off by adding the media element. 
And the easiest way to find it, it is here, but you can you can search for it here as well. So you, you can see that you've got two, you've got a media player, this is just because I've got an additional SDK installed and um, a media element. You've also got the media transport controls but we're going to be defining the transport controls with code so we'll worry about that a bit later on. So we're going to go ahead and drag this over here and you'll see that it's quite small so we're going to drag it into the corners and snap it into place and just resize it to size but we're going to change the size of it to auto in the code a little bit later on. Next what you want to do is go to the document outline and you can see you've got a few things here, you've got the top app bar, bottom app bar, um, the grid, media element, so everything on the Universal Windows platform usually works off a grid, this is to keep things in place and move things around and keep the app as responsive as possible. We're going to pin this tab here, in fact we're going to pin the toolbox as well. So we'll go to document outline and we're going to right click on bottom app bar and click add command bar and as you see that adds a little command bar in the bottom on the bottom of the screen this will snap into place and it will stay right at the bottom of the screen regardless of the size and it will automatically adjust to the size of the screen as well okay I'm just going to drag this over a little bit and just adjust everything so we can see there we go okay so next what we want to do is we want to go into the XAML code view okay and we're going to change the horizontal alignment to stretch we're going to get rid of the height and we're going to change the vertical alignment to stretch and get rid of width next we're going to add stretch equals uniform and what this will do it will stretch it to the required size when we load up the app. Okay, we're also going to add the height equals auto and the width equals auto as well. <coughs> so once we've got the media element, we can go back into design view and just take a look. Whoops. Okay, so as you can see, that, that will stretch to the correct size. Um, and we can also change the requested theme as well to dark if we want. So once this loads, we'll have the dark theme and it will look a little bit sleeker on the user's eye. I think the light theme is a little bit too light. So I'll do opt to select the dark theme <coughs> when I'm using the media element. Okay, so next what we need to do is we need to add a button to the app bar. Now what we do for this is we're just going to get rid of one of these buttons. And then you see we've got just one button in the design view now. At the moment it's just a little tick. But we're going to change that to a library icon. And we're going to change the label to read open file add a tapped event handler and just press enter there and as you can see it will add app bar button underscore tapped so we're going to go ahead and change this so it is a little bit easier to read in the C sharp code and we're going to change the name of the event handler to load media file So once that's done, we can go ahead and take a look at the design view again. As you can see, we've got a little library icon there. Just tells the user that, the user that that's the button they need to press to load a file. So we're going to go ahead and view the C-sharp code now. So I'll just right-click on mainpage.xaml. 
through the Solution Explorer and click on view code you can also press F7 once you're on the page to view it we're going to get rid of just this default text <coughs> the default help text and we're going to change the app bar button as you can see it's created a event handler for the app bar button but we need to change that to load file was it load file no load media file okay so we're going to change that to private void load media file and then in brackets object sender tapped rooted event args e okay so next what we need to do is we need to add some using statements so we need to import some things so we're going to get rid of all of this at the top all these using statements and I will supply you with the using statements that you're going to need but for now to make it easier I'm just going to paste those into there so we're using the system so we're using the system API the XAML controls, the XAML input controls the Windows storage Windows storage pickers FFmpeg interrupt so this is what we're going to be using to play the media files Windows storage streams, user interface pop-ups, and the Windows Media Core. Okay, so next what we need to do is we need to add some code to run when the user clicks on the media file button or the load media button. So because this is a, an extremely long piece of code, or not an extremely long piece of code, but it is quite long, I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in and then we'll walk through what it actually does. So this is exactly the same code that I'm using on the tutorial I've provided through my website. Um, but we're just going to show you what this actually does. And don't worry about the fact that there's errors at the minute. That's because we haven't imported all the required packages and things like that yet. Um, but we will be doing that soon. All right, so when the user clicks on the load media file, we want to create a new file open picker instance. So to create a new file open picker instance, we're going to be using the Windows storage pickers um, as we've defined here so if you hover over that um, you will see it says windows.storage.pickers.fileopenpicker so we're going to be using the storage pickers API to load up a new open dialog now the open dialog what I mean by this is when you click on open you see a little dialog pop up um, and in Windows 10 that's called a picker so we define the variable variable for the file open picker as picker this is just to reference later on and change a few settings and things like that so once we've created the new variable for the file open picker we need to set the, the default options so first of all we set the view mode to picker.thumbnail because this is a media player what we need to do is set the suggested start location to the videos library um, you could opt to set this to the music library, documents library or things like that if we just go through the various different options here so we've got computer folder, desktop, documents library, downloads, home group, music, objects 3D, pictures library, unspecified and videos library we'll go ahead and select the videos library because this is a media player Next we need to add some some file type filters. We set the file type filters and I will provide this default list of file type fil filters for you. Uh, this is generally the main video files that are supported out of the box on a Windows device. Next we need to find the storage file that has been selected. So a storage file is the file that gets picked by the user. Um, as you can see, we've got a, a error here because we haven't made the method, method async synchronous yet. We will do that very shortly. So storage file file. So the f file is the name of the storage file that we're selecting, and then we're going to wait for the picker dialog to close, and then pick a single file asynchronously. So to set the method as to set the function as uh, asynchronous. 
after private on the private void load media file, we're going to put type in private async. And then as you can see, that error has now gone. Okay, so next we move on to the file validation. So first of all, we need to make sure that a file has actually been selected. So we set, we type if file does not equal null. So does not is an exclamation point and then an equals. Um, if we wanted it to equal null, we'll just put a double equals. But we want to make sure that it does not, that the file is not null. So if the file is null, then it means that a file hasn't been selected. If it's not null, then a file has been selected. Next, what we need to do is we need to ensure that the media player is not playing um, before we try to play another file. So we type in if media player dot can pause equals true. So double equals there. Then we try and pause the media player. So we so we run a try event um, and catch an exception if one occurs. We don't display an error if one does occur, but we do prevent it from running the app. So if the media player can pause, then we will pause it. Otherwise, it won't do nothing. So if it can't pause, then we try to stop the current media. So. If we can stop the media, then, then it will stop. But if there's no media playing that for us to stop, then it will just catch the exception and move on. Next, we need to create a random access stream. Now, the reason we do this is to pass the video file to FFmpeg interrupt, which we will import very shortly. So we create a random access stream with the file that we've just selected. Next, we create a FFmpeg instance from the stream. So as you can see, the iRandom access stream is called read stream. So then we select read stream. So next, we create the media stream source from the um, from the stream that we've just created. So FFmpeg MSS dot get media stream source. Next, we need to make sure that the media stream source is valid. So we again we check if it's null. If it isn't null, then we can continue. Otherwise, it will prevent it down here, and it will show an error dialog, just saying that an error has occurred while attempting to play the selected media file, um, and that may be because it requires additional codecs or another reason. And then we give them an option to download the Klight codec pack. So. If the media stream isn't null, then the media file is valid. And like I mentioned earlier, we'll start to modify the transport controls, so the play buttons, pause buttons, um, fast forward buttons and things like that. So first of all, we enable the transport controls. And then next, we set the fast forward button to visible and enabled the fast rewind button to visible and enabled the next track button visible enabled playback rate button so that's a playback speed um, skip backward to visible and enabled skip forward visible enabled stop button visible enabled and right tap to enabled okay so next we set the media stream so the media player that we've created in the XAML code we set the source of that media player to the stream source that we've just created and then finally we start playing so everything is self-explanatory on that function and as you can see I've included some handy comments here just to explain what everything does and you'll notice that on all of these media player um, on all the all this media player code here, you've got an error. That's because I actually forgot to rename the media element. So we need to after the media element tag and um, before horizontal horizontal alignment, we need to type x colon name equals media player with a cap with a capital P and a small m at the start. Next, we can go back into the XAML code. And you'll see that that should change. There we go. 
and now the only error, as we can see by the right hand side here, is on the FFmpeg stream. Next we need to initiate the FFmpeg interrupt class and we do this <coughs> just at the top of the page, just after the constructor. Uh, now the constructor is where everything gets initialized, so it's public main page and then this dot initialize component inside. So just below there, type in private ffmpeg interrupt mss, ffmpeg mss, and then a semicolon. Next, we need to import ffmpeg into the application. So to do this, we go to the solution explorer on the right hand side. Right click on references and select manage NuGet packages. Now NuGet is a huge database of um, add-ons and tools that you can use in your Windows projects or your application projects. It's not specifically for UWP, but most of the applications on here are compatible with UWP. So we're going to go ahead and select browse. And then we're going to type in ffmpeg interop. And you can see the top result will be ffmpeg interop.uwp. <coughs> we're going to go ahead and install that. And this will automatically install the package and copy the DLL files over to the application. Okay, so now you'll see that the FFmpeg interop MSS is actually in blue, and that's because the FFmpeg class um, has been imported, as you can see over here. And we now have no more errors. All of the using statements are being used, they are none grayed out. So everything should now be working, and you should have a fully working media player. So let's go ahead and test this on the local machine. So we're going to go ahead and debug it. We'll select the x86, so 32-bit version for debugging, just because it's got a lower memory footprint and I am using OBS, so I'm using quite a lot of system resources. So we're going to go ahead and debug this now. This will take a little while to build on the first build, but after that you should start to speed up. Okay, so we're just loading up now. The app is running. As you can see, it's, it looks quite plain here. This is because we don't have anything on there at the minute. But we're going to go ahead and click on the Browse button. As you can see, that's working. I'm not going to load that because that's a video I'm recording at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and just load up a video from my films, films library. Not a lot in here, but there's a few. And as you can see, that's all working. I am going to go ahead and mute this because I don't want anything to anything to pop up on YouTube saying that I've breached copyright and things. But as you can see there, everything's working. The skip button's working, things like that. It's pretty decent quality um, because we're using FFmpeg instead of the default uh, application. And... For some reason, that's not letting me access the full screen button. So I'm going to go ahead and just close that. Um, so we're going to just iron out this at the minute. We're going to go to the event handlers here. And we will just go to... We'll double click on the media opened event handler and type in, uh, actually we've got to name this first. So the app bar, the command bar, we're going to name so we're going to name it command bar x name equals my, my cmd bar and then we're going to go back into the code view and type my cmd bar dot visibility equals visibility dot collapsed okay next we're going to go back into the XAML code 
and we're going to select media ended and we're going to go exactly the same as this but set it to visible instead and then finally we're going to go for the tapped event but this time we're going to use <coughs> an if statement and type in if my cmd bar dot visibility equals visibility dot visible open the curly brackets and then set that to collapsed else set it to visible <clears throat> okay so what this will do is it will figure out whether the command bar is visible or not and if it's visible then it will collapse it and if it if it's not visible it will make it visible that is when the that is when you actually tap on the media player from within the app so let's try that and that should all be working now, nicely now uh, that is a little bug that I didn't actually notice on my tutorial for the website so I will fix that as soon as possible as well so as you can see because the media player hasn't actually loaded yet because we haven't loaded a file the command bar stays there so we're going to go ahead and select a file and as you see as soon as it starts playing it goes into the full size of the app but when we click on the app it loads up the command bar and we'll just stop this and as you can see once you start, well, actually, I will go to the end of the video and play it just so, just to make sure it stops automatically. It find it uh, loads automatically. I am going to have to talk over this because I don't want any content to be detected on YouTube. I'm not actually playing a video, so it's fine. Uh, so once he stops now, it should. There we go. So once the media starts, it will close the command bar. Once the media ends, it will open it. And if you click on the media player itself, it will open and close the command bar for you. So that is how we create a basic media player to play all types of video files on using universal windows platform okay guys thanks very much for watching um as always if you like the video please hit the like button as always subscribe for more content and until next time i'll see you all again soon